Hi there, in preparation for your trip we have put together a small video on the how to's of camper van life so hopefully you will get the best out of your trip with minimal issues so that you're prepared before you go. Charlie is a 2015 Mercedes Sprinter 6 berth with a few added extras. First up we have a carbon monoxide detector that will detect a gas leak. It will alert if there is excess gas detected in the van. There is also a smoke alarm on the ceiling. We tend to take that off when we cook as it alerts to everything. There is also a fire extinguisher at the end of the kitchen bench right above the gas hob. There is also a fire blanket just inside the entry door. Charlie is fully alarmed with motion sensors, just like a house. The cab doors are also alarmed, as is the side entry door, and also the garage doors have switches on both sides. So if the van is locked and secure and someone just breaks into the garage, the alarm will still sound. Most importantly during the day, if you leave the van, make sure the windows are closed because the curtains flapping in the breeze will set off the alarm. It is also GPS tracked, so if the van happens to be stolen, we can track it at all times. The main control panel is in the cupboard to the left of the microwave. This is your battery level indicator for the house batteries in the van. These are your water levels, fresh water on the left, grey water on the right. Fresh water is low at the moment as we're cleaning out the tanks in preparation. The rest of the switches are clearly labelled as to what they do, such as fridge, TV, lights, range hood and so forth. To operate the radio in the rear, the TV switch must be on. It'll take a few seconds to flick on. Select language, source button, and then choose your favourite radio station. Now we have outside speakers, which you can flick that switch down. Turn off the inside speakers, and then outside you've got the party bus. To operate the diesel heater, which is underneath the, drop, the passenger seat, um, it's up here on the bulkhead. We press the on button, and you'll notice the flashing for the uh, system, and press OK, and then just leave it. It will um, fire up after a little while. If it hasn't run for a while, it will take a while to um, ignite itself and set itself up, and you can set the temperature by pressing the up buttons or the down buttons and it will fire up. If we press this again it will take us back to the menu and these buttons work their way across. So the next one is fan speed we press OK and here we can set the fan speed. It obviously goes from 1 and it will cycle through. The next ones are programming, we don't need to worry about those two. So we can go back to here, press that, and it will turn it off, and the display will go off. We'll just now show you where the vent is just to make sure you don't have anything in front of it, because if you've got it high and it going, it will probably melt whatever's in front of it. So it's down there, just under the passenger seat. So you need to keep that area behind that clear if you're going to operate. We also have a gas kettle which goes on the hob for when we're not plugged into power at a campsite. This small piece of foam goes between the lid and the grill. It stops it rattling so much when you drive. So when you're not plugged into power, must use the gas. So we will take you outside and show you where it hooks up. We run two small gas bottles. So you can split between the two, simply turn the tap on, as far as it will go, and you're off. With the power, this will plug into the power source at a campsite. We also have another lead that will plug into 240 volt uh, normal power plugs. If you open this area here, 
this part needs to go up on the top and basically just push in to take it off push the little blue lever down and pull it off we have also had a small solar panel installed for charging cameras phones and laptops when you're off grid and not plugged into power the inverter switch is on the front of the seat at the dinette just flick the switch down that will provide power to two plugs right next to the inverter and also a further two plugs down the back of the van these four will work with the inverter and solar power these other plugs however will only work when plugged into power at a campsite you are not able to use the microwave jug or to electric jug or toaster while on solar as it is not a strong enough system these plugs will also work when plugged into power the light switch powers the ignition switch so to operate push in turn you can hear the gas sound hold it in for a couple of seconds let it go and you can turn to adjust the flame and straight up and down is off to operate the oven open it up you can pull this part out here which will protect other stuff from getting hot we've got oven and grill if we turn this around up high push it in hold it in and then you can release and then you can adjust the flame the amount of heat if we go the other way hold it in and that does the grill For hot water, water heater switch must be on and flick the switch to whichever side temperature you want. The little red light you saw flicker shows that the gas is igniting. If that red light however comes on and stays on, it means that there is a fault and the gas has not ignited. No light as shown means the water is now heating. Everybody's favourite, the toilet. The toilet swivels so it can be front on so you've got more room to get into the shower or you can swivel it for use so that you've got more leg room. The vent must be closed for you to be able to take the toilet cassette out of the side cubby which we will take you out and show you how to do that now. There is a little lever underneath which you must lift up and pull straight out. Funnel comes up, screw the cap off, empty, empty, and then rinse at the dump station until it runs clear as the chemicals are blue. Then simply carefully slide straight in till it clicks, and you're good to go. If showering in the van, please open the roof vent to cut down the amount of condensation that is left in the van standard shower head just like you would have at home with a mixer and a very lightweight screen that can pull across so the toilet area does not get wet. This needs to be slid very carefully as it is just quite light and it sort of pulls forward a little bit and clicks onto the frame and slowly slide it back. For flushing both the toilet switch and the water pump switch must be on at the control panel and this little indicator here is empty me now. Making up the rear bed. The table, these have handles. That one's loose as anything. Uh, right. Loosen that. Lift the table off. Handle here, slip out, push around. Loosen, pull out, push back in, turn, turn, and that can slide off. And that can go down. To make 
this couch area into a bed. The table needs to sit on these edges around here. To fill in the space here, we use the straight cushions. And then you can fit your bedding over the top and you've got a storage area underneath. Fit in the hole, look for the slot in the back, slides down. Bring on your height, turn, pull out, turn back, push back in, tighten that up. To convert the central lounge area into a bed, push down on the two buttons there and on the other side, and lift off, put the leg down, just turn, put in, into the space, the cushions from the back go into the, the middle, both sides. If the bed needs to be made wider, these pull out from the side and the part uh, that goes in here is sitting up on top of the luton. So you just bring that down and put that in and you've got a queen size bed. Make the table back up. Slip it out. Leg up. Tip them over there. Good thing about this table too is you can slide it to one end or the other if you need more space on one side. Outside the van we have a small table that folds down for little picnics or putting things on. We have a side storage locker we generally use for shoes and that that we don't want in the van. Power inlet plug. Gas bottles. Fresh water tank. Please only fill up using the fresh water hose from specified taps, not at the dump station. I have seen some horrible things at dump station taps. Garage, that is our items there. They will not be in the van when it goes out on hire. We have an outdoor shower. This is really handy if you've been to the beach or with sandy feet or just anything that you want rinsed off before it's put away in the van. Again, the water pump switch inside must be on for this to work. And it just ravels up very carefully and locked into place so it doesn't follow you down the road. Other side entry to the garage. Toilet cassette housing. Another storage locker where we keep fresh water, grey water hose and some cleaning supplies. The fresh water hose is light blue. Please only use this at campsite fresh water tanks, not dump stations. To empty the grey water tank you will find the grey water hose in the side locker on the driver's side in the black zip up pouch. The outlet for the grey water is also on the driver's side, just at the end of the van. 
has two pins on the side to pull out, remove the cap, fix the hose on and again close the pins. Aim your hose down the grey water drain. Some of them are quite different but generally just shove it down the hole and you're good. This lever needs to be pulled across. Now sometimes if there's a lot of sediment in the bottom of the tank, it can take a while for it to flow. Sometimes simply just jiggling the hose, as Adam is doing there, can make it flow. Sometimes, however, if quite a bit of sediment has gone down from washing dishes, for instance, you will need to flush the hose by simply placing it on the tap at the dump station, flush some water through it, and then empty it down the drain. Nine times out of ten, it's a very easy fix, and that will clear any blockage. Then same in reverse, close your handle, undo your pins, pull your hose off, and put your cap back on and secure. Please also thoroughly rinse the hose out when you've finished emptying, as this stops it smelling when it's packed away. Drain all the water out, wind it back up, back in the pouch, and you're ready for next time. To use the awning, you will find the awning pole in the garage at the rear of the van. First you've got wing nuts to undo at the bottom, and then there is latches at the top that holds the awning in place. It's the same on both sides, top and bottom, doesn't really matter what order you do them in, um, we just tend to do it that way. Most importantly though when you open the awning is because it is such a large heavy awning you must support the weight of it when you get to the tipping point. So the awning comes out, it gets to the tipping point, you need to support the weight with the pole which you can see here, that is holding the weight and let it down gently. Then redo up the wing nuts just loosely to secure it not too tight. The most important thing is supporting the weight of the awning so that it doesn't damage the side of the van if it drops. To put the awning back up, exactly the same in reverse, undo your wing nuts. Now it does take a bit of effort to get the awning to go up, the same in reverse when it reaches that tipping point, support the weight with the pole and gently put it against the side of the van to avoid damage. When the clips go down, and wing nuts are secured. Now you may actually need to push against the strut of the awning to get the latch done up and then wing nut again at the bottom. We also have a larger separate picnic table stored in the garage and Adam demonstrates the setting up of it which is relatively simple. top simply unfolds like a concertina one side hooks on with little pipe type thingies on one side and the other side simply just snaps on independently adjustable so if the ground you are on is not quite level you can have all four legs at different heights to get a level table. Right, you need to turn the, make sure the gas is turned off. This here you need to turn back clockwise. Take the hook out from here. the attendant to fill the bottle. Turn it anti-clockwise. 
bottle into the corner. The other bottle in and put the hook into one of the holes. First rule of the gas station is awareness of overhead height. Not all are the same height. Charlie's gas tank is on the left hand side, the passenger's side. You simply open the flap and unscrew the petrol cap. Charlie runs on diesel which is always secured with this lever which you need to lift up to avoid confusion with other petrols. So basically pump in, squeeze the handle up and we have little levers that you can click back which will hold the pump and pump gas for you. You can also preset your own amount with the instructions here or if you're filling up the attendant will activate the pump for you which can take a couple of seconds. We hope you enjoy your trip. We are contactable at any time if you've got any questions or you have any issues.